we've now made our way on over to Lafayette, Indiana to check out this house behind us. You want to know whose it is or was? It was Shannon Hoons of the band Blind Melon. He spent many years of his childhood in that very house right there. In this video, we're going to show you the house. We're going to show you the school he went to and we're going to pay our respects at his grave. And we cordially invite you to come along. Come along. When Shannon was born, he was actually named after his father, Richard. However, to avoid any mix-ups, he decided to take his middle name and make it his first. Shannon Hoon, that's who we all know him by, of course. But his name is actually, of course, Richard Shannon Hoon. His father's name, I think, was Richard Leonard Hoon, so they weren't senior and junior. But anyway, he spent many years in this house, right here. According to our research, at least, this is the house where he spent many years in, here in Lafayette. Well, yes, we live at 103 Kasuf. This is the famous house of Shannon Hoon from Blind Melon, I believe. Yes. Uh, I don't know the music very well, but my wife, she had the CD, so I have heard his music, but I did hear the stories from his mom, because we did buy this house from Vernell Hoon, his mother or whatever, and he used to live upstairs on the third floor, and he wrote a lot of music up there, so that's so that, pretty much the story. He pretty much had that whole third floor to himself? Yep, he had, yep, they made this to a apartment walk around here, this right here, it was, all, it, was, it was all made on the side. Oh, it had a separate interest in everything. So when I actually, when we first moved in, we went up and he still had pegboards of like old, like memorabilia, like wow. stuff with him and his friends, uh, stuff like when they would record or whatever and things of that nature. He had like old, like just stuff hanging on the walls. Cool. I mean, we threw it all away, but. Yeah. <laughs> Sold it on eBay. Right, probably, probably could have at the time, but I, I didn't know Blind Melon, so yeah. yeah, I knew all about it though. But local hero, so people like him. Oh, um, well, that is awesome. Now you were saying before we turn the camera on, there a lot of people used to show up and kind of look at the house, especially the first few years. Oh yes, the first four years we were here, I swear we we, we had random people doing exactly what y'all were doing. Yeah. I was pulling up along the side, and I was like, okay, why is everybody? And my wife actually was with me at the time. She was like, baby, this is Shannon Hoon's house. And I was, she was like, she said, There's a, he has a lot of big fan base. And I was like, oh, why haven't I heard about him then? <laughs> you know? It's, it, but then, like I said, I, I, I went to Purdue here. So I guess I wasn't oh. really from the Lafayette area. I'm from Ohio. Yeah. So now that I've come back, though, I have heard the whole the Guns N' Roses, Axe and Rose kind of got him put on and that whole story. So I was like, oh, damn, he is kind of big then. Yeah. So at that point in time, I kind of did my little history on him. So. Are you gonna be putting it up for rent? Actually, we're about to gut it. We're about to gut the whole thing. Okay, yeah, this is where he's staying. That was his room right here. And he used to have like little stuff on the wall right here. Wow. And it was all like his like memorabilia and stuff. I don't know if there were lyrics or anything, but I just know it was like a lot of stuff papers hanging up on the paperboard. Oh, that is really cool. Here's a look inside what was once Shannon's closet. Now let's look at the rest of Shannon's area of the home. Let's see what kind of view he would have had from the front window. Can't see much right now with it being summertime and with the trees full of leaves. Here's a little area where he probably watched TV. Let's see what the view is in here. Let's take a walk through here. And in here, he had his own little kitchen. And even a little dining room area just outside the kitchen. And in here, we find a bathroom, which is being renovated at the moment. Wow, that was absolutely exciting. Who would have thought that we would run into the homeowner and be able to look inside? Thank you so much, Bert. We appreciate it so much, Bert. Bert's also got an announcement that he made to us. He wants us to pass along to you guys. Any of you huge Blind Melon fans out there and you want to stay in the room that Shannon grew up in, the room he used to live in, his whole area, 
well, you're gonna be able to soon. He says, hopefully by November, he's gonna put that place on Airbnb. So you guys keep an eye out on Airbnb. All right, we got a lot more to see. Thank you so much, Bert. Thank you, thank you. Well, check out the school in the grave. Let's go see what else we might find on this store. Let's Saturday. go. We're now at Shannon's High School, which is called McClutchen High School. There's a lot of construction going on here today, but it would appear the building that was the high school at the time Shannon attended would be that older looking building in the back, while this building in the front appears to be new. He played football in high school and was also in track and wrestling. He also graduated in 1986. We're now at the cemetery to pay our respects to Shannon. He's buried here along with his father, Richard. Actually, his father died earlier this year. There's not even a headstone for him yet. His brother, Tim, is also buried in the same little family plot here at the cemetery. So we're on our way to find that. Of course, Shannon found a lot of success in the band Blind Melon. Their big hit song, No Rain, which was actually written by one of the members of the band who was dating a girl. And this girl was very depressed and down and out. She would actually be upset when there was no rain. So that's how they wrote that, what they wrote that song about. Now, they, that became a huge success for them, allowing their album to sell millions and millions of copies. Back there in the early 1990s, when they found a lot of success, grunge, as well as other types of rock were big. But what wasn't big was kind of that classic rock sound from the 1970s. And that's what they kind of went for with their band. They wanted to have an older sound, a little bit of a quieter sound also. And they found great success with that by kind of being different than the rest of the folks who were out at the time. Now, during this time, Shannon unfortunately began to get into drug use very heavily as the band found more and more success. He even had a drug counselor accompany him as he went on tour to try to help him with his fight against addiction. Yeah. And unfortunately, that was not able to prevent him from continuing to party and continuing to use drugs. Let's walk on over to the grave. Just two years after Shannon graduated high school, he won a spot as the lead singer of a local band called Stiff Kitten. Just a year later, he took off to L.A., started a band there with four other people, and they decided to name the group Blind Melon after the character Blind Melon Chitlin from Cheech and Chong and also 1920s blues artist Blind Lemon Jefferson. Several years earlier, while in high school at Jefferson High School in Lafayette, Shannon's older sister Anna became friends with a man by the name of William Bruce Bailey, who later became known as Axl Rose. He's the lead singer of the band Guns N' Roses. Anna introduced her brother to Axl, and he invited Shannon to sing co-lead on the song Don't Cry on their album Use Your Illusion 2. Hoon sang an octave higher than Rose for the song. He also appeared in the music video for the song, and it helped put him on the map. Just a year later, in 1992, Blind Melon's self-titled debut album was released. As the band toured over the next couple of years in support of the album, Shannon began to get heavily into drugs. At times, the band had to cancel shows on the tour so Hoon could go in for detox or even jail on charges ranging from assault and drunken disorderly to indecent exposure. In 1993, the single No Rain was released and the band became huge basically overnight. The next year, the band went to a studio in New Orleans to record their next album, which they finished in early 1995, at which point Hoon was forced back into rehab. The album Soup was released that summer, and the band went on tour again. This was the tour where Shannon brought a drug counselor along with him, but that didn't do him any good as they got right back into drugs. He would even be impaired on stage for many of the band's shows. On October 21, 1995, the band's tour bus was parked in a parking lot in New Orleans near where the band had recorded the Soup album. Band members found Shannon passed out in the bus. They couldn't wake him so they called the police. He was declared dead around 1.30 that afternoon of an accidental drug overdose. He always loved his hometown of Lafayette, so much so that when his band found success, he bought a house in town where he stayed with his girlfriend, Lisa Krause, and then on July 11, 1995, their daughter, Nico Blue, was born and was being raised here in Lafayette as well. Nico was only three and a half months old, when her father died. Here is Shannon's grave. Richard Shannon Hoon, beloved father and son, September 26, 1967, October 21st, 1995.
His headstone also has some lyrics from the song Change written on it. I know we can't all stay here forever, so I'll write my words on the face of today, and they'll paint it. Right next to his grave is the grave of Shannon's dad, Richard Leonard Hoon, who died on Sunday, June 27, 2021. His obituary is a funny one, which starts out by stating, in all capital letters, Hooners left the building, Budweiser stock, lowest since 1953. It points out at the age of eight while climbing a tree, he was electrocuted by 7,500 watts when he came in contact with high tension wires. Subsequently, Dayton and Mulberry lost power that ended Richie Rutan's no-hitter when the lights went out. He loved Alabama, Duke, and Purdue sports. Golfing, drinking, Bud Light, and women. Not necessarily in that order.